and basis uh, for a period of year of assessment, at least one meeting of board of director, which is BOD and Malaysia. The distinction between resident and non-resident. For the resident, first, companies carrying on business such as uh, banking, insurance, shipping and air transport. Uh, the income is taxable on a world income scope. Second, other companies, the income accrued in or derived from Malaysia. The third one is taxable if in derived from Malaysia. Okay, from, uh, for the non-resident, uh, the income accrued in or derived from Malaysia. The second one, taxable on business income accruing on uh, accruing in or derived from Malaysia if there is a permanent establishment in Malaysia. There are four types of IRB practices for a company to be a resident. Firstly, the trusted was created outside Malaysia by a person or persons who were not citizen. Second, the income of that trust body for that year basis of assessment wholly derived uh, from outside Malaysia. Okay, the third one, the trust is administ administered for the whole of that basis year outside Malaysia and lastly, at least one half of the number of the member trustee are not resident in Malaysia for that basis year. Tax return for the company under self-assessment system, companies required to submit a return of income within seven months from the closing date of company's year-end account. Second, particulars to be determined when returning are including the amount of treasury income and tax payable by the company. Third, the tax return shall be deemed a notice of assessment and shall be deemed to have been served on the company upon the debt tax return is submitted and lastly e-filing or online filing of tax return via internet is available in the inland revenue port procedure under self-assessment system for company to be complied corporate taxpayers are responsible for obtaining and forwarding income tax return form it should be filled and submit to the IRB without attached document. It is must set submit to the IRB within seven months after the close of the accounting period. Second, submitting tax estimation and paying installment within stipulated period. Third, computing the company's income tax. Fourth, declare the income and expenses including deductions and rebates. Fifth, keeping record for audit purposes. The taxpayer of the company should fill in the tax return form and submit it to the IRB. These are the sample of form C that should be filled by the company, taxpayer of the company and written within seven months from the closing date of company's year and Okay, next, I will explain about the penalty and offences due to the service self-assessment system. First is the taxpayer owe a duty and responsibility to the government in relation to income tax payable under the Act. And the next is in order to prevent the taxpayer from non-compliance with the such duty, the Act has legislated the specific provision. Uh, which is at the Pearl Income Tax Act 1967, any person who committed for an offence will be fined either through the penalty or imprisonment or both depending on severity or the number of offences. Next up, I will explain more about the offences and the penalties. Okay, next I will explain about the Director General or the court is empowered to enforce the such offences and levy penalties when necessary. First is the offences of failure without reasonable excuse to furnish an income tax return form. 
they have to pay the penalties 200 ringgit to 20,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding 6 months or both. And they have the same penalties if the failure without reasonable excuse to give a notice adjustable of tax. Next is a offense of make an incorrect tax return by omitting or understating any income. They have to pay the penalties 1,000 ringgit to 10,000 ringgit and 200% of tax under charge. It's the same penalties if they give any incorrect information in matters affecting the tax liability of a taxpayer or any other person. And next is the offenses of willfully with intent to evade or exceed any other person to evade tax. They have to pay a 1,000 ringgit to 20,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years or board and 300% of tax under charge. Next is uh, offenses of assist or advice without reasonable care other, others to under declare their income. They have to pay their penalties 2,000 ringgit to 20,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years or board. And the next offenses is the uh, attempt to leave the country without the payment of the tax. Uh, that person have to pay the penalties 200 ringgit to 20,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding six months or void. Uh, the next is uh, if the offenses are of truck any authorized officer of RRBM in carrying out of his duty. That person has to pay the penalties 1,000 ringgit to 10,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year or void. And the next is a fail with a reasonable excuse to compile with in order to keep proper record and documentation. That person has to pay the penalties 300 ringgit to 10,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year or both. And the, the second last offense is the fail without reasonable excuse to compile with a notice asking for certain information as required by RIBM. They have to pay the penalties 200 ringgit to 10 feet. 20,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding 6 months or both. They have the same penalty if the fail without reasonable excuse to give a notice on changes of address within 3 months. Okay. This shows that the court is empowered to enforce the charge of answer and leave a penalty where the censure is. Malaysia implement first tax on late 1970s. The sales tax was implemented on 29 February 1972. It, is, it was declared in Government Gazette as Malaysia Law Act 64. It is a single stage tax and imposed on all import and local product except those exempted under sales tax exemption order 1972 or were produced by manufacturing exempt from being licensed under sales tax Lice Exemption Order 1972. Three years after that, our country, Malaysia, introduced another tax called as Service Tax on another law which is Service Tax Act 1975. This act enabled the government to collect tax to the service and good provide which were mentioned in the second schedule of Service Tax Regulation 1965. The tax rate at the time is fixed at 6%. After implement SST for many years, the government want to change it to good and service tax. Good and service tax was reading for was table for first reading at Dewan Rakyat on 16 December 2009 and said to be implemented by the government during the third quarter of 2011 but it was delayed due to morning criticism. During the budget reading on 2014, Prime Minister Najib Raza announced that good and service tax will be implemented starting on 1st April 2015 replacing the old tax which is SST. He said that the GST program is a part of tax reform program to enhance capability, effectiveness and transparency of tax administration. On 2018, our politics was changed. By May 2018, the new Malaysian government led by Tun Dr. Mohadid Mohamad decided to reintroduce 
SST after completely scrapping GST. On 1st June 2018, the GST, has, the, the GST rate has been reversed to 0% from 6%. And on 31st August 2018, GST was completely terminated after 3 years and 5 months being implemented. On 1st September 2018, the government has reintroduced sales and service tax which is commonly known as SST 2.0. SST 2.0 is governed by Sales Tax Act 2018. It is an ad valorem tax and rate applied based on group of taxable goods 5 or 10% and specific rate for petroleum. As for service tax, it is a form, it is a form of indirect single stage tax imposed on specific term as taxable service. The service tax is rate at 6%. And now I'll talk about the comparison between GST and SST. For the first one is the concept. For GST, there is multi-state tax system and added value. This means the GST will include in the price of supplier, retailer, manufacturer and consumer. But for the SST, there is imposed on output stage. That means this only single stage tax. That is for the manufacturer. The second is the pricing method. The price for the ST is include for the price but for the SST the price is excluded of SST that means there is no SST include for the price the third is the rates rates for the ST is only 6% and for the SST it's 5 or 10% for the sales tax and 6% for the service tax the fourth is scope of charge the scope of charge is the supply of goods and service and also the sale on import goods but for the SSD, the scope of charge is sale of manufactured goods, selected to sale service and also import service and goods. The fifth is the threshold. There is uh, only amount of 500,000 ringgit and seed of the amount is claimed, is can claim for the tax. It's also same for the SSD. But for the food and beverage, there is must exceed 1.5 million for claim for the tax. Next, I will talk about the differences of calculation between GST and SST. I will start with the calculation of GST. As you know, GST is split by 6% and there is a multi-state system that include of the GST. The include of supplier, manufacturer, retailer, and also consumer. So, we will start with the supplier. Supplier, with the initial, co initial cost of goods sold, 100 ringgit, is time by 6%, we will get 6 ringgit. And for the manufacturer with 100% of profit, profit margin, 212 ringgit, is time by 6%, and we will get 12 ringgit. The 12 ringgit is minus by 6% and we will get the input tax of 6 ringgit. For the retailer with 50% of profit margin, 380 ringgit it times by 6%, we will get 80 ringgit. And the 80 ringgit if deduct by 12 ringgit, and we will get the input tax of 6 ringgit. And the final price of consumer is 380 ringgit. That means 6 ringgit is price plus by 6 ringgit and plus by 6 ringgit and we get the total of GST is 80 ringgit and now is the calculation of SST the SST paid is only 6% and as you know the SST is only liable for the manufacturer and consumer but for the supplier and retailer there is no charge tax on the, the SST and for example for the manufacturer with the 100% of profit margin that is 200 ringgit that times by 6% we will get the 12 ringgit uh, the manufacturer will pay the SST on the purchase price and the remitting the amount is to the government and the final price for the consumer is 3, 380 ringgit